and a couple are laying in bed, okay? <laughs> you know which one that is. And, uh, okay, so it's 2 o'clock in the morning, a couple are laying in bed, right? And she hears a noise downstairs, all right? So she nudges them, right? <laughs> she goes, I hear something downstairs. Go look and see what it is. What attribute does the husband have when at 2 o'clock in the morning, in the dark, his wife says, go downstairs and see what the noise is? What attribute does he have? He's heavily insured. That's the attribute, okay? That is her retirement plan right there. Three months later, she's on a cruise to Acapulco, and they're calling her a cougar. You know, that's what this is. All right, so here's the deal. Now, I have people in class tell me, they, they want to argue with me on this, and they will say, if I hear a noise in my house, I'm getting my gun, and I'm going to go look. And I go, dude, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, you've been sound asleep, it's pitch black. You up? I know my house like the back of my hand. I don't need the light on. Well, that's really cool. Do you also know that this clown could be hiding anywhere in your house, and as you walk by, it's adios amigo. So there's two reasons we don't hunt in our home. One reason is you can die doing that. But there's another reason. And the other reason is this. You can't shoot somebody over a property crime. So if you go downstairs and you're in your living room and the lights are off and you see the guy and he turns on you and you shoot him, you better hope he's got a gun in his hand or you're going to jail. You can't shoot somebody over a property crime. So how do we protect our family? How do we keep out of jail? And how do we keep our home? And it's really a fairly simple thing. Here's what you do. You set up what we call a safe room. Don't panic, you don't have to install big steel doors, okay? And you don't even use your AK-47 for this one. What you wanna do is set it up, if it isn't already, set it up so that you can go on one side of the bed opposite where the door to the room is. So it puts a bed between you and the door. Okay, have you got that? What you do is on that side of the bed, you put a firearm, and we'll talk about that. It'll surprise you to know that I have strong opinions on something, that I do. You put a firearm and a cell phone over there, okay? Now, you hear the noise in the middle of the night. Here's what you do. You take your wife, push her off to that side of the bed, thump, onto the floor, you dive on top, <laughs> no, ma'am, that's not right. Uh, and then what you do is you take the gun and lay it on the bed, point it towards the door, take out your cell phone, dial 911, and you go, this is David Lombardo, I'm at 1113 South Raven Road, Shorewood. I'm, I have a home invasion, I have a firearm in the bedroom in the upstairs northeast corner of my house, send the police. Put the phone down with the microphone up. This is all being recorded. Don't hang up. Exactly. Don't hang up. Because what you are doing is you're creating a court record. Okay? So you have just alerted the police. You've told them you have a firearm. You've told them there's home invasion. Now, you pick that gun up and you point it at that door. Do we have any carpenters in here? Do we have anybody that works with them? <laughs> Robert, hit them. They got so much money they can give to our foundation. Nobody works. Uh, okay, the average interior door in a home that's not handicapped accessible is how, Robert, you should know how wide. 32 inches. 32 inches, okay? Think about that, 32 inches. Most men, and I'm not being silly, most men pretty much fill the door, 32 inch wide door. Even women, you know, you don't cut sideways through a door when you're walking, you walk through the door. So all you have to be able to do is point to the middle of that 32 inch hole. All right, that's it. Now, at the top of your voice, you say, I know you're in the house. I have called the police and they are on the way. I have a gun. If you come in this room, I will shoot you. That is now recorded. All right, it is on, well, I was gonna say tape. They don't use tape, but it's all those little zeros and ones giving up their life in some machine somewhere anyway. 
protons, neutrons, so on, whatever those are, um, is permanently recorded, just like Sister Lucille said in the fifth grade. It's in my record forever, right? Now, if you hear them actually coming up, so much the better. Yell it out another time. Let's get around there twice if we can. I hear you coming up the hallway. The police are on the way. If you come in this room, I will shoot you. Now, unless you live in a cavern, you can see a textural difference in the dark in your bedroom door. Can you not? Okay? I mean, you may not be able to pick out detail, but you'll know if there's somebody in the doorway. For people who are uncertain, I didn't say opposed to, but uncertain about taking a human life, and I understand that. <coughs> I like to make things as light and humorous as possible, but I get that, believe me. Um, here's the deal. You're not making the decision. You have warned this individual once, probably twice. You've told them, if you come in this room, I'm going to shoot you. It's not your call. You didn't make the choice. You didn't invite him in. You didn't provoke him. You didn't do anything, and you warned him not to do that. If he hits that doorway, that's your literally your trigger point. That's it. Boom, boom. That's simple. Now, heaven forbid if that ever happens, what happens in the aftermath? <clears throat> um, here's the thing. Take you know the still being recorded. So what you do is, you turn a light on now, and you have to understand that when the police arrive, they have no idea who you are. You could be the bad guy. So you say it to them, you go, hey, I'm up here in the upstairs bedroom. Don't say I just killed somebody, all right? Clam up. People have a, it's, it's bizarre. I mean, it truly is, human nature is bizarre. When you get into that kind of situation, you will have a compulsive need to talk. I kid you not. I mean, the cop will come in and go, what happened? They'll try and do an information dump. And they're scribbling like crazy because they will use that in court. All right? You do not talk to the police. Now, I don't mean be belligerent. I don't mean be a jerk. But you don't talk. You simply say, I am overwhelmed by this. I, I, nothing like this has ever happened in my life. I simply, I, I have to talk to an attorney. I got to, I got to recover from this before I can talk. I want to be cooperative, but I just, I, I can't talk to you until I talk to an attorney. So that's it. Don't let them push you into talk. But before the cop actually gets there, what you want to do is empty the gun, lay it on the bed with the action open, step back as far away from that gun as you can get kneel down on the floor with your hands on top of your head. It's better if you actually lay face down on the floor because that's where you're going to end up. <laughs> the cop is going to come through that door with a gun drawn at about 230 miles an hour and he's going to pounce on you like a cougar on a, you know, on a mouse. And uh, you're going to go down, face down to the ground, they're going to cuff you up because numero uno in law enforcement, you control the scene. Doesn't do the cop any good to get himself killed. Okay, so until they sort it all out, you're going to get hooked up, and you're, and you're going to go face down in the process. So, you know, just kneel down, put your hands on your head, be cooperative. And then they'll feel real bad when they brush you off and pick you up and, you know, get the dust out of your face. So, the second thing to know about this is, is there anybody in here that doesn't...